Cool. Let's talk about Bitcoin. So what's happened? <laughs> so we've talked all week about this being a rising wedge, right? I'm sorry, there's a million lines on here, right? Can't afford it. Will you do subscriber giveaways? Sure, let's do it. All right. So we talked about this all week being a rising wedge and that I wasn't really, you know, buying that this upside here was actually upside because you know i felt like this was still a rising wedge you know if you look at it our overall volume movement our overall trend was price consolidation right and we were in a downtrend right so we know that when we're in a downtrend we have this kind of rising wedge consolidating pattern it's going to go to the downside right um dennis asked so this bitcoin magazine comes in a bundle when i buy your indicator right no uh not this month um that was last month special this month it comes with a hot tub so and when you buy my indicator you can't even buy the indicator sorry you got scammed if you bought it did the person who's going to give you 750 dollars for free in the youtube comments tell you that anyway so we saw this was a consolidating pattern going up so we knew this was a rising wedge and then one morning the nasdaq which is one of the shit charts the shit coin charts we look at the Nasdaq just went straight vertical one morning, and that's what this did. And, you know, I wasn't really convinced by that because of this, this overall movement in this, you know. We've been going down for almost a year now, and this was just kind of par for the course. So just having one day of bullishness or two days of bullishness here didn't really make it be like, okay, guys, we're going to 500K, right? Not, no, not at all. You can't erase a year of decreasing volume, decreasing liquidity, and you know increase shorts you can't do that by just one or two days of going up especially when you're coming out of a bearish pattern so you know i felt like this you know this was really just attributable to the nasdaq just pumping up that day and then you know, we came back down and like we said we you know whenever you break a channel or a trend line you're going to retest the trend line eventually right that's what we did we came down we tested this trend line and we even said this was a good long here, much like over here, right? And, and right here, we said this was a good long too, right? This is a good long. I mean, we did have some upside here. And I believe we came up and tested the first resistance. And then it looks like ever since then, we've just been kind of playing out a rising wedge. You know, I, I was really confident we were going to play out a rising wedge somewhere. Somewhere over here, you know, because we were getting up here in the top of this box, right? And there's actually some interesting theory about you know, for some of these triangles, um, if you really get like all nerdy about it, you can see that for some of these triangles, they actually have a certain amount of touches until they play out, right? So a good one is like a symmetrical triangle is a one, two, three on the top and one, two, three on the bottom, right? So it'll be like this. Did I do that right? One, two, three, yeah. It'll be like one, two, three, A, B, See, and then it goes up, right? That's like the theoretical stuff. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. Sometimes, you know, but I don't really follow that stuff. Because, yeah, I mean, kind of hippie. Even though it's super nerdy. I mean, that could still be hippie, right? So in this case, you know, I, I was pretty confident we were going to have the Rising Wedge play out somewhere. Actually, somewhere over here. But then we had this nice pump up temporarily. To the upside mainly because of the nasdaq and it looks like our rising wedge eventually did just come kind of come and play out the key levels that we were talking about uh, if i remember correctly were like 16 it was like 16 uh so this one 16.5 at this poc right here you know we were talking about this one so much i kept saying this poc right everyone heard it i know beardy heard it you guys all heard it you know this poc that was forever down here right this was the key entry for the long, right here. Right? So we talked about a few levels here. We talked about 16.5, this POC, and 16.7 and 16.3. And when I saw that the charts were going down today, well, somebody said in the Discord, I could already, all, I almost combined already and automatically. I could automatically see the charts in my head. I'm not even kidding. 
Okay. I knew that we were going to have bounces at those levels. Right? And hopefully you guys could see that too. Based on all the talks we had this week. Because these were the key levels, right? And how we got these levels. So 16.7 was our first key level. And look at this. We did have a nice bounce here at 16.7. Okay. We had a nice bounce here at 16.7. Just a momentary relief, you know. Um, but this was our first kind of local bottom was right here. All right. Below this level right here, just to recap why we chose these levels. Okay. We can say that this level in here, there's not much volume in, in this area, right? There's really not that much. Okay. Locally since actually forever, right? We've always kind of gone vertical through this area. So we expect a drop through this red box right here, right? I'll make it bigger. All right. So we expect a big drop through this, this box right here, which we had obviously. Um, but we can see why we chose 16.7 ish in this area because we went sideways here. There's some decent volume in this area. And look at that. We had a bounce of 16.73. Perfect. Now we didn't hold that. We did come back up, right? So you could have made buku dollars on this. I'm sure we came up and we probably went to the first, first resistance actually. Let's look, right? Let me turn on yesterday's too, because these are fresh. These are off the presses. Okay. So when we bounced here at 16.7, we came back up and then we came back down and we said the next key level, the major level was this POC. So the point of control for this entire big range where we went sideways, the area of the biggest volume was 16.5. That was the area I was talking about. And you can see exactly what happened. We fell through this area where we have no volume and look at that. We wicked this area clean and dry. Perfect entry if you got into a long hair, right? So this is what we prepared for. You know, yesterday I, I kind of was saying that, you know, I'd kind of wait, you know, I'd be looking more for longs when we were down here at this trend line right here. We're kind of, kind of look more for longs. Actually, we we're like right here at 17.3, you know, but right now for the time being, I'm just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. Right. After all week, we talked about, you know, what was going to happen, you know, most likely it's going to be rising west to downside, but, um, I did end, end up getting into a short up here. I like, kind of like on the way down because once we broke structure, I knew it was all over. Right, it's only a matter of time until the 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 rising wedge played out. It's only a matter of time. So I got in somewhere up here, and I I took profits one time, but I was at this work retreat all day, so I wasn't able to really watch it. And then we had this perfect entry down here at this long. I took profits here as well, but I kind of screwed it up because. I uh, was at this work retreat and I was in the middle playing laser tag. <laughs> I was trying to, and I got an alert on my phone saying that like Bitcoin's going down, right? So I'm like sitting there in this dark ass room wearing this, you know, laser tag chest thing with a gun in my hand. And I'm sitting there in the corner trying to put a trade entry in. And I see all these people running around me, you know, shooting each other. My one of them, this guy on my teammate, uh, my team's going way too hard. Come on, come on. Take, we got to we got to protect the base. Come on, flank them on the right. I'm like, "Come on, man. Just chill out, bro." Supposed to be having fun, right? And he's like yelling at this woman on my team who's pregnant. <laughs> you know. Anyway, and I'm sitting here like trying to put in this uh this take profit order as we're dropping. And the reason the way I screwed it up was because I thought I was going to do like a 25 or 50% take profit. I only did like 5% take profit here. I don't know how. But I looked at it and I was like, I was like, wait, where'd my order go? Like, did I even take profits here? <laughs> like, and then I looked at the order history later on when I got out and I was like, damn, I didn't take any profits really. So I calculated it, you know, and saw it was only like 5%. So maybe I forgot a zero or something. But uh, yeah, I mean, no, no big, no biggie, right? The main thing is I move my stop loss down. I'm finishing in the green no matter what, right? So, yeah, that's how uh, Bitcoin's looking. So what are we going to do next, right? So remember, anytime you have this much downside, you should be starting to look for relief soon. Okay. This was a pretty major area of volume in this area. So if we turn on our, our um, volume in here, you can see that this is quite a big area of volume in this, in this area, right? We did wick down quite a bit and we took out some of it 
But I wouldn't expect this drop right here, this next drop, you know, it's not going to be like this previous one, okay? Like this one was, you know, we we, we um, hit the bottom, came back up, and we fell right through it, right? That's not going to be like this next one, okay? Because there's actually real volume in this area, and it, it'll probably hold for a little bit, okay? So most likely we're going to get something like this, where it's going to have to come down, fill some of the orders, come back up, fill some of the orders, and then we get a drop down. Or... We kind of come up a little bit and then, you know, do a little thing right here, come down, make a higher low first, come back up, you know, and all that stuff. And then we drop down, right? Probably something more like that is more likely, but either it could go either way, you know, can't really say for sure. Um, but after having all this downside, I would be very careful looking for shorts. Now, that doesn't mean that you should go in and long right away. Okay. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, you know, like, like random rent said, uh, you know, that there's, um, you know, not many good entries. I agree. Right. So, you know, right now, you know, it's tough to short because if you didn't already short before, you know, it's tough to short, avoid the FOMO. It's tough to short now after all this downside, I would not recommend shorting right now. Okay. You know, you might get another drop down, you know, but there's not, it's a lot of risk. It's a lot of risk to, to short now. Okay. For not much reward. So. You know, we still have some volume under us at this at this range right here. At this 16.5 to 16, you know, 4, 8 area. So I would be careful um, shorting at, th at this low, you know. Um, instead, what I would be doing is I'd be looking for, you know, key shorts somewhere up here. All right. So we have our some key levels here would be 17K, like 16.9. That's a key level for short. Okay. Um, and then this 17.1 is a pretty key level to short. That's this prior week POC over here too. Um, key areas to long would be our value area low down here at like 16.1, 16.2. It's a fairly key level as well. All right. Anyway, um, I think that's it going to be it for Bitcoin. Now, if we go back and we look at our um, kind of our our metrics here to see what's really happening under the hood. Go to the 15 minute. And let's see what's happening up at the very top before this huge drop, okay? So, you see that, um, yeah, look at all these, look at all these. Can you SFP, Jay? I can SFP. Where do you want me to SFP? So, all of, we had all these bot signals up here, right? All these bot signals leading up here, showing that there was extreme volume to the downside coming up, right? All right, the last JBot and the last JJ Binks were over here at the bottom on November 28th. So that's that's very reassuring for us. I mean, I knew these bots. These bots run my life now, right? Um, they tell me how to pee in the morning, so... You know, these, these bots are, are very good. And I've always compared them to Google Maps, right? When you take Google Maps to navigate, sometimes it takes you down a path and you're like, eh, I don't think this is right. So then you take your own path and you just get completely lost, you know? And you have to end up taking the path that Google Maps gave you to, to give, you know, gave you to take originally. So um, that's the same thing. Sometimes these, these alerts come out of like nowhere and I'm like, what? You know, like... I'm like, what? Is that, is that is that real? Like, are you sure? But again, trust in the JJ Binks, trust in the J bot. And that, that something's gonna happen soon. So they require context, obviously. You know, don't rush in blindly to short or long right away. You know, look for a good entry at a level. Okay. But yeah, these things are so good because they're based on volume. So I think that sums it up for right now. For the most part, you know, for Bitcoin, I'm looking for I'm avoiding shorts right now. There may be some more downside, you know, slightly more, maybe retest 16.5, but you know, I wouldn't expect a huge downside. Okay. I would be looking more for longs after having all this downside or just, just watching. Okay. Um, but I'm right now kind of avoiding entering into any shorts to see what the market does um, at this time. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congrats. 
Most people finish early, but you made it the full distance. That's awesome. If you're looking to learn how to trade crypto, check out one of these other videos.